Hey guys, how's it going? Brixie here again, and um, I've got a couple of questions from a few viewers. Uh, the first one was relating to VNAV and how to set it up so that it works properly. Um, I haven't been able to get it to work in the sim. I don't think it's quite uh, programmed correctly. There's something weird going on. I was following a forum where they were saying that uh, it wasn't perfect either, so uh, that could be the case, but we'll go through the motions here and uh, I'll show you guys how to set it up. And the second thing is about how to load in uh, an RNAV approach and get the uh, waypoints to sequence properly. So we'll go over that as well. Um, the first way that I can show you to load a flight plan is actually in the flight planning menu. Uh, so you can actually go ahead and load in everything you need in the in the kit itself to fly uh, the whole flight with the departure and the approach. Uh, so to do that, um, let's go ahead and set up um, a flight here. We'll use Spring Bank, CYBW. We'll set that as our departure. Arrival is going to be in uh, CYQF, Red Deer, so we punch that in, we'll set this as the arrival, 70 mile flight, 20 minutes or so, I'll try to cut a bit out here, um, and now if you go up here you can actually set it to low altitude airway, uh, which I'm not sure if it follows the preferred routing or not, I haven't checked, it doesn't really matter, the important part is, is that it puts some waypoints in here for you, and it lets you, more importantly, uh, give you a departure for an IFR. So this is the that was at Springbank 2 departure for runway 35, and you can actually go ahead and set in your arrival. There's no star coming into Red Deer, so there's obviously nothing there. And the approach is going to be the RNAV 35, uh, and you can see it puts in Leveg, Igris, Pidme, and then the airport itself. But you just you want to make sure you want to go into the plate and check. Hey, those are the right points. Interesting to note here, there is this red circle here, which is a no-fly area, and it's basically right on. Right on our, our base leg there for uh, the approach. Uh, I looked it up, uh, I'll include it here. You can look any of these things up in the designated airspace handbook. Uh, I would check my map, it was uh, a CYR 208 I believe, and um, this is what it said, and I'll just include it here on the screen for you. But basically it's a prison, so you can't fly, you can't fly within five miles of it. Um, cool, so everything's loaded in, let's go ahead and hit fly. Okay, so let's just go over a couple things here. Um, so we have our program, our, our flight plan programmed already in. Um, as you can see, I'll do it on the big screen so you guys can see it. As our departure, uh, this is our first departure point, our last departure point, and then our two on route waypoints, and then it takes us into the RNAV into uh, Red Deer. And we can see this as well if we. Sorry about that. If we zoom in on our kit, we can see for Spring Bank, the active lag is to D0, which is the departure. And then D last after that, then Bitka, and then Myrek. Um, and then it gets into our destination. And then under the destination is the approach, which isn't activated yet, um, but it's all set up in there. I will say just be careful with some of these altitudes. Sometimes they're messed up. Like for example, this is uh, 9,650 feet, and we want to be cruising at 7,000, right? So let's go ahead and change all of this to 7,000. So on the departure, we want to be up to 7,000 as per the plate. So we punch that in and we're going to stay at 7,000 for the remainder of the flight because we're only 67 miles and we're heading northeasterly so 7,000 makes sense. This one there. So to get to the VNAV thing, um, let's go ahead and actually make this a lower altitude. Let's say 6,500. And I'll show you guys why the VNAV is a little bit messed up sometimes. Um, so basically, we should descend 500 feet once we're past Bitka and hit Myrick at 6,500 uh, feet. Uh, and the destination, that's good, that's fine. Um, so here, let's make this 7,000. I don't know if it will let me change it because, yeah, it's part of the, uh, it's part of the approach. Uh, so we won't be able to change it until we activate the approach, which is fine. Um, just keep in mind that it wants to keep us a bit higher. Okay, so that's setting up everything in there. Um, now, the other question I received was about how do I set everything up if I don't set it up in that flight planning menu. So let's just go ahead and delete everything. Move. And if you delete the origin, you should delete the on route stuff as well. Yeah, and it won't let me remove the, um, the RNAV. We'll just. Uh, We'll just load something else in. Um, just put in Winnipeg, I guess. There we go. Should 
clear it up. Oh no, I kept these points. Why did I keep that? Anyway, I uh, can't delete it. Doesn't really matter. Um, let's go ahead and add our origin again. So, Springbank is CY. BW. Sure. An on route waypoint. Um, can, we can do that now, or we can go ahead. Um, let's cancel that actually. We can go ahead and enter our procedures now. And set up the departure spring make two. For which one right? Three, five. Load that in. And then go back into the flight plan. Active flight plan. Now, now it's uh, it actually does it a bit differently now. Um, so instead of that D zero point, it's giving us um, a user waypoint instead. It's just pulling it's just pulling it from somewhere else. And the interesting thing too is this course is three four five, which is the correct course because it's heading three four five uh, on takeoff up to seven thousand. Um, but the uh, the funny thing is is that uh, when you load it in manually, like as I'm doing now, it gives you the correct course. So it must be pulling it from a different database somewhere. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. And we want to go up to 7,000 feet. That's perfect. And we can go ahead and just set that on the outsell right now. So we don't have to do it later. 7,000. And let's go ahead and add an en route waypoint right here. We'll use this NDB, DO2. Punch that in. You can also use the, so here's just asking which one do I want. Just look at the distance, pick the one that makes the most sense. And let's punch it in. Okay, uh, oh, that's under destination for some reason. Uh, I thought I punched it in under en route. Let's punch in Red Deer back in there. There we go. Add an on route waypoint. It just didn't like it because I didn't have a destination. So you need to program the two ends first. So your departure and your arrival, and then you can go ahead back and punch in the on route stuff. So now that I've done that, I should add it. Yep, which it did. Perfect. And uh, let's go ahead and set this to a different altitude. We'll set that at 6,500, and I'll show you guys that the VNAV uh, is a little little off. It's not working perfectly. Um, but perfect. So that's in. Um, and now it, it's gotten rid of our uh, RNAV, but we can. that's no problem. We just go procedures, approach, and then it pulls this airport from your destination database. And now you can select the runway you want and the transition. And it gives you the sequence here, but just be careful because like some of these things won't actually populate. Uh, so it's pulling the sequence text from some some other file. I'm not sure where it's pulling it from, but it's it's not correct. Don't hit load and activate because you don't want to activate the approach till you're on the approach. Just hit load for now. And you can see that it programmed the RNAV in there perfectly. And then you go back to flight plan. Scroll down. 6,500 feet, 6,500 feet. That's fine. Um, notice that the altitudes are actually different uh, now that we pulled them uh, or manually entered uh, the approach instead of loading it through the flight planning. So, just something to be aware of. Neither neither are wrong. It's just going to change how you fly the approach. Like I think we had like nine thousand feet or something. Let's see if we can go ahead and change this. Um, so fifty one hundred was our. Or no, we want to be at sixty five, right? Which is what it was. Yeah, sixty five. Let me just pull up the plate really quick again. Yeah, so Leveg, and then once we're past Leveg, we can go down to 5100. So Igris can actually be at 5100. So we'll go ahead and punch that in. Now, it might not let me change it here because it's part of the approach. Yeah, it doesn't. So 6500 feet. It should work. It just means that we're going to be intercepting uh, at 11 miles instead of 6.6, .6, which is where I would probably prefer to intercept it. I mean, it just means we're going to intercept the glide slope earlier, so yeah, it's actually more efficient to do it this way. 
Uh, perfect, so everything's programmed in, we're good to go. Um, let's make sure our autopilot is set up. Make it easy on ourselves. We'll turn the adapter on. Uh, there we go. Make sure that's good. We actually don't want the autopilot on right now, obviously. And we're going to use VS mode just because it's a bit smoother. Uh, you can get into some POIs. Uh, if you use fight level change, it's just a little, it's a little finicky. We'll just give ourselves a thousand feet per minute there. And again, we're just making, like, you would, in real life, you'd make sure that, hey, a thousand feet per minute gives us that 230 feet per nautical mile uh, to meet that climb gradient for the departure. So that's just something to be aware of. It's a little gotcha. And we'll turn the flight director on as well. We have some guidance. Yes, alt select, 7,000 feet. Everything looks good. We're departing heading 345. Just punched in, everything looks good there. And let's go ahead and turn heading mode on. Okay, perfect. And parking brake's coming off. Let's make sure I actually did get that parking brake off. There we go. Alright, let's rock and roll. Power's coming in. Power set, good power, everything's green. Our speed's coming up. thousand feet per minute that we set in. Which it is. Of course we don't want that. We want FMS. And again we could we could be flying this in, in nav mode. Um, but uh, the departure procedure said heading and we have the course here three four five it would be the same thing. I could switch to nav mode right now and you'd be good but I'll just wait until we're at 7,000. Uh, we're actually going to transition our user waypoint, so... Um, in, in, a, in a perfect world, they'd clear you, or they cancel your departure, and then they clear you en route. Um, so it's similar to what they just did. Nav mode is on. And FMS mode is captured. That user waypoint coming up. Uh, Six thousand climbing seven. And you can see now that we've transitioned that user waypoint. If we go into our legs. We can see that we're now no longer spring bank to user. We are user to K2. In K2, we want to be at 6,500 feet. So once we level off here, I'm going to actually activate VNAV. And what that should do is calculate a top of descent for us to be at K2 at 6,500 feet. But I'll show you that. I don't think it's I don't think it's going to work. I haven't got it to work yet. But we'll give it a go. A good habit to get into too is just uh, sync your heading every time you turn. That way, if anything crazy happens with the autopilot, you always have a backup. 
to follow the clearance that you have. Some traffic coming up at our 3 o'clock. Should be well clear of him. And there's Elt Hold, 7,000 feet, slowly leveling off. Let's see if we can get up to around that 245 ish for cruise. And we are on our way. The other thing too um, that I just want to talk about briefly is when you do activate the approach, it will fly uh, the profile, but you have to be, it won't capture the glide slope unless you are slightly underneath the profile for the three degree. If you're above it, you will never capture the glide slope. The kit just won't cycle. Uh, the other thing too is runway 35, they put in 3000 feet here. Uh, but if you're actually looking at the plate, um, that can descend you below minimum, so you have to be very conscious of where your minimums are, otherwise you can descend right into the ground. Because this is giving you the runway elevation, which is why. But uh, just keep that in mind, because it's descending you straight down into the runway, so if you don't catch your minimums, it can descend you through it and into the ground. Back to Kilo 2. This is our heading information, 003, 30 miles away. And you can see that we're actually getting closer to it now. 4 minutes, 50 seconds to go. Now, I would expect this leg to be magenta because it's active right now. I'm not sure that's something that's weird, something weird is going on, which is classic. Uh, the other thing too is because this is at a 6,500 foot and we have VNAV uh, turned on, now we do, I would expect it to generate a top of descent somewhere right in here so it descends us 2, key, two kilo 2, but it doesn't, which is why I think the VNAV is a little messed up right now. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I might have missed that would be causing that. I can't think of anything. If you guys know why VNAV is not working, please let me know. As far as I'm concerned, I think that um, if you have a different on route altitude entered, or a different altitude entered at all, VNAV should be generating top of descents prior to those points so that it knows when to start descending you down so that you can hit your points at the designated altitude as that you've, as that you've set it in the kit. Uh, but I think, it, I think it's a little messed up right now. So um, Again, I haven't confirmed that. It's just a hunch that I have. Hopefully they patch that later. There used to be an issue um, with the localizers being like five degrees off always, even though it said you were tracking the localizer perfectly. When you'd look up, the runway would be like five degrees off to your right, and it was it was it was weird. So some weird things happen with the autopilot in this game. The only other thing that I can think of is maybe because I'm using standard pressure and it's taking real world conditions, it might not be the correct altimeter, which is maybe why VNAV is getting thrown off. That's the only other thing I can think of. But at the end of the day, if it's in the kit, it should cycle and it should do what you command it to do based on the modes that you have selected. The other thing too is that usually you'll have to reset your alt selector prior to this point to the new altitude because the alt selector is not connected to the box points so you have to manually enter that but when you do manually enter that um, prior to your top of descent point which is not generated which is another problem you'd expect that this would change to v alt um, so for example 6500 is in the alt select 
but there's nothing telling the autopilot to descend. VNAV is responsible for telling the autopilot to descend, but there's nothing in white saying that VNAV is armed or anything like that, so I'm, I'm not sure. Honestly, if, if you guys know, please let me know. I've been messing around with this all day trying to figure it out. Alright, coming up on Kilo 2. I haven't started the descent, descent yet. At the, and again, at the end of the day, not a huge deal. Just something to be aware of. Just gotta monitor it. We can use VS or flight level change. There's other ways to get down. We can do mental math to get down uh, to calculate how far back we should start descending. There's a lot of ways around it. Like, VNAV is nice to have, but you don't need it. The other thing, too, is once we get in on the approach here, um, I would expect that this would change to approach mode, which it doesn't, because in real life, the approach mode, it just shrinks down the accuracy um, of your, basically, of your CDI scale uh, to keep you legal. I think it's point, point 0.3 miles or point 0.3 nautical miles or, or maybe even less for approach. I think terminal might be, no, terminal's five. No, on route's five. Anyway, it's something we could look up. Okay, so we, now we can see that the glide slope uh, has come alive. Now, that's not for our approach. I haven't actually seen that before. That might be for something else. No, it is for the approach, actually. But as you can see, yeah, we're above glide slope, so we need to, we need to start descending at some point. Uh, once we cross the veg, we can do two things. We can stay with what the box has, 6,500 feet, and intercept at 11 miles. Or we can descend it down to 5,100 and intercept at 6.6 .6 miles. So we'll try it at 6,500 first. I think it might be a bit high, but we'll see. We'll give it a go and see what happens. So Igris is at 11 miles. So I would expect to intercept that glide slope at 11 miles once we're at 6,500 feet. The other thing too is um, in real life ATC will clear you uh, on the approach at which point you would go procedures and activate the approach. However, since we're just kind of doing our own thing here, and ATC is comp a computer, which doesn't really know what's going on, we're just going to hit activate approach. And again, it is activated now. However, there's no change because we were already direct Leveg. And if we go into our flight plan, Leveg is our first point. However, now you can see that we're under the approach section instead of the on route section. I don't know what this, this user waypoint is. I don't know why that's in there. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we're about to do the approach. I'll just brief it up really quickly. Uh, weather was sky clear. There's a couple clouds out there, uh, but we're well below them. Uh, runway is going to be runway 35. The approach is going to be the RNAV runway 35. The altimeter, we'll just leave it standard, 2992, for simulated purposes. Minimums are going to be 3,360, which will be 3,400 set in the alt cell once we're on the final approach leg. And speeds will fly 140 for the approach, slowing to 105 uh, once we're inside the final approach waypoint. And on the missed approach there, we'll climb to 5,200, track 345 to Obvum, and then to Mertu. And the interesting thing here too is uh, there is no missed approach programmed in. Normally when you load that approach, it will put in, after runway 35, it will put in your missed approach points, just in case. But it will leave like a discontinuity, like it would it would show, instead of having an approach, uh, like, like this is a discontinuity here between the en route section and then the approach section, it would put in a missed approach box similar to that uh, approach box. And then after that, it would have the waypoints of them and then where to. Uh, but it doesn't do that. So if you do go missed here, you're just going to have to do it 
kind of the old school way, 5,200, heading 345, and then you can mess around with your custom waypoints and put them in. You, you can't add a waypoint into this approach segment because it's pulling it from a database. Um, so you have to add them in after, once you're in the missed approach on your heading climbing up, that's when you can go heads down and start programming things in for the missed approach. Coming up on Leveg here, and then we'll start our ascent down. Um, I'll use flight level change uh, for this one just to show you guys that there's different ways. Like we used VS there on the climb out. I would probably honestly just use VS here again, uh, but we can use flight level change just to show you guys a different way to descend. There we are, Leveg. Let's go ahead and start slowing down. We're going to configure on this base leg here. So I always like to pull the power back just until you can hear the gear. And then just pump it up just a little bit to cancel it. Okay, 6,500 feet. We can go ahead and... I'm just going to turn VNAV off here because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to use flight level change. And then the speed. Increase that. Because otherwise it's going to give us a super steep descent, right? Like... For example, see, like 2,000 feet per minute. <laughs> I don't want that either. Sorry guys, that was my bad. I accidentally pumped it up like 200 knots somehow. There we go. Should start us ascending. Yeah, we are. And altitude hold looks like it's already captured. There's 160 decreasing. Gears coming down. And approach flaps coming out. There we go, three green. 140 is what we're looking to capture here. Okay, altitude hold is captured there, 6,500 feet. Go ahead and turn that off now. Whoops. Off? Hello? Fine. And there's Igris. Activate the approach. And as you can see, we're actually above glide slope here. So it won't actually capture. Which is fine. Not the end of the world. Uh, as I said, it was going to be too high, and we're too high, which is expected. Um, so on this one, we'll use VS. The nice thing and why I prefer using VS over flight level change mode, especially on an approach, is that you won't easily blow through your stabilized approach criteria, uh, which is a thousand feet per minute in the descent, and there's a couple other caveats there as well regarding the airspeed and everything else, the loke. Uh, so 5100 is set in there, and we can go ahead, up VS mode, and it will give us an 800 feet per minute descent. Make sure you adjust the power when you do that. And because we activated approach mode, we have VLT and glide path, so they're just waiting to capture right now. Let's bring this up again so you can just watch the, uh, the transitions here. So PID me, we want to be at 4,590 feet, and we will be if um, the approach mode captures. Which we showed at 6.6 .6 miles, so if we get down in time. Got three miles to go. Which puts us at about eight miles, and we need to be at 5,100. So we're going to deepen this down 6.6 .6 miles prior to the maximum 1,000 feet per minute. Oops, actually I hit 1,100. Okay, so we're still above our glide slope here, which, as I said, is not the end of the world. We're going to hit Pidme a bit high. We should be at 4,590 at Pidme. So let's keep this going down. Being careful here that we don't actually descend through any minimum altitudes or anything like that. 4,100 is the min here, so... 
Okay, there's Pidmy. Let's keep the altitude going down. We can descend down to MDA now, which is 3,400. We'll punch that in. Glide slope is coming alive here. We can see that it's actually captured it early. Um, I'm surprised that I captured it from above, but I think it's as long as it's within a couple degrees of three, it will capture it. So we can go ahead and start slowing down a bit more now. It's fighting for that glide path. Help it out a bit. I'll just do everything on this main screen here for you. Here we go. We're on glide path now. We eventually caught it. And again, our missile approach point is runway 35. We're approximately three miles back. And again, this is a good, a good time to always sync up your heading. Because uh, if we go missed here, We'll have the heading pretty much in there for us already. Yeah, there's 500 feet. Uh, this is when I like to look outside. There's minimums, and we're visual. So at this point, I'll disconnect the autopilot and transition outside. Oh, I don't like that. Let's see. Coming back on the speed now. We got our final flap in there. It's going to help us decelerate. I'm just picking up that three degree, two red, two white, and just flying it into the threshold. 105 knots short final is briefed. Coming back on the speed. There's a friendly traffic. Uh, looks like he's doing the same thing. <laughs> Ooh, a little rocky there on the departure. <laughs> That's all good. All good. Normally that uh, would have been a go around, obviously, but here we are. There we go, slowing down to touchdown flare. There we go, into reverse. Light on the brakes. Coming out of reverse now. And we taxi it into a stop. And that's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you guys learned something. Um, hopefully, I didn't scare you too much with that almost mid air collision. Anyway, thanks guys. Have a good one. We'll catch you next time.